Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about the word intensity. That was one of the words you saw in that video intro, and I, I think it's really important for uh, those of us who are in the Christian metal world to talk about uh, both the positive sides of intensity and the pitfalls that Satan uses to derail us many times. But first of all, I want to read a quote from John Wesley. Some of you might have heard this, but John Wesley, uh, back in the 1700s, he was uh, the guy that started Methodism, very intense guy. And he said, light yourself on fire with passion and people will come from miles to watch you burn. You know, when you look at people like that who... who uh, I'm not talking about hellfire and brimstone. I'm talking about uh, just speaking like you believe what you're saying. You know, that's one of the things that I think is a strong point in Christian metal. We use a, a music style that is very intense. And those of us who are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ, we use the style as a tool for a very intense message. But, you know, the pitfall is, is uh, when we reach out to the rock and metal culture, sometimes we're tempted by Satan to become a rock star. And those of you who have been on stage and had any kind of experience on stage, you know that that, that pride that comes over you when you have this powerful music behind you and you are proclaiming and you are basically, you have control over the crowd. It is a very powerful experience. And when they come up to you afterwards and they treat you like you're bigger than life and they want to, uh, you to sign autographs. And, you know, I've been in situations that just made me feel very uncomfortable in the past, you know, people coming up and wanting autographs. And I realized that I had to be very careful in how I come across as a man of God. And honestly, I have made many mistakes in that. Because I went over into the side of being a rock star rather than, and this is another term I want to coin, a kingdom warrior. Because honestly, that is the reason why I started in this whole business to begin with, was not to be a rock star. Quite frankly, I am not into uh, the rock and metal scene. It is a tool for me. I, my personality uh, is, is very metal, but I am not into the metal scene. That's, that's hard for some people to understand. You know, uh, when I worked in Christian theater, uh, people would come up to me and they knew I came from a metal background and because I had a strong voice and I was put into different roles in the theater uh, and, you know, they come up to me and say, hey, you probably like, you know, started naming the bands you know, ACDC, Van Halen, Kiss. And to be honest with you, I would say to them, I am not into any of them. In fact, I am motivated to do what I do because I absolutely abhor what they're doing. And that intensity, I believe, is what marks a Christian metal kingdom warrior. Because you can be a rock star like every other rock star on the planet, and you can start to um, think of yourself too highly than you ought to think. And that's the trap from the enemy. So I want to give you five things that I have written down on my mic stand here in front, underneath my camera. The first thing is, I want to, and by the way, I'm speaking to, especially to people that are my age and who have been in the business for a while. But obviously, there's those of you who are younger, maybe you haven't even experienced um, successful, uh, a successful band being on stage and, and selling CDs and, and being able to, to, to make good music. But you know what? Um, we're all in this together. And so I'm hoping that some of the things that I say, specifically to the men and women who have been in the industry, because I'm, I'm here to challenge you, <laughs> But I'm also hoping that the rest of you can be encouraged as well. So the first thing is you are part of the body of Christ. We are not above anybody else. So when you step off the stage, you immediately are one with the people who look up to you, even though that they look up to you. Uh, you are part of the body of Christ. 
we work hard at even trying to um, be accountable to others who don't even understand what we're doing that are in the body of Christ. Pastors and and mentors in my life have believed in me over the years, and they see my heart, and so they've they've backed me even though uh, they didn't understand it. And it's important to understand that we must, and I'm going to teach on this in the future because I believe it's very important for those of us who work in Christian metal and rock ministry to be accountable to the body of Christ. And we're not a rock star. We're not above people. We don't look down on them. That's why I try so very hard that when some of you on Facebook, you know, message me, I try to answer your, your, you know, I'm just another guy, you know, I'm another part of the body of Christ using my gifts and talents for the Lord, but I'm not thinking of myself too highly than I ought to think. I've really worked hard at that. And I think that's a really important thing. That's number one. Number two is your gift is a tool to make disciples of Jesus Christ. If you start to believe the lie, and that's what I'm going to call it, it's a lie from Satan that you're here to just make music and make money and ride the edge of compromise and, and do your thing like any other person in the world, you're really missing out on what God has called you to do. Those of you who say you know Jesus Christ, you need to get in his word and understand that he gave us a command and this life is only an internship for what is to come. We're to use our gift as a tool. Number three, your gift is temporary. You know, those of us, you know, I grew up as a teenager in the 70s, and so we watch all these guys getting old and some of them dying in the secular music world. And we're starting to realize that um, those people who were once very strong are not so strong anymore. And we even see uh, bands like uh, just recently... Uh, Jeff Tate from Queensryche came to Lancaster City to play in a small club. Well, back in the early 90s, you couldn't have seen Queensryche in a small club. They were only in arenas. And we've seen this shift now to where a lot of these guys are getting older. They can't do what they, nor they used to be able to do. And so we should learn from that as Christian metal people. And s some of us already know that. I mean, uh, your gift is temporary. It's given to you to build the body of Christ, and it's temporary. Number four is you will be judged by our king for how you used your gift. And if you read in 2 Corinthians 5.10, it talks about the Bema seat that every Christian will stand before the Father and give an account for what he has done, he or she has done in their body and the Bible says, Paul told the Corinthians, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade some. And I believe what Paul was trying to get across there is, is that people can spend their entire life building their kingdom on earth, being a rock star. But yet they're not grasping that they have been chosen and called to be a kingdom warrior, not a rock star. And I, I want to make that that very plain that I believe that that's something that we need to look at as Christian metal musicians. And number five, there is still time to use your gift. You know, one of the things that I have learned in my life is that Satan has hit me and hit me and hit me for so very long that it almost is like bam, 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 like, you know, Rocky getting beat to the ground. But you have to understand that God still sees your gift as what he gave you, your part in the body of Christ, and he understands that you are dust, the Bible says. We constantly deal with the temptation from the enemy. We constantly fight the battles of pride, being a rock star rather than being a kingdom warrior. I'm here to encourage you to be the kingdom warrior that God has called you to be. And I want you to walk in this. And I'm going to be making more teachings on this because I believe God wants all of us to energize each other. You know, I want to read something in Psalm 71. 
it says, and this is a, Psalm 71 is a really good psalm for those of you who are older musicians. And, you know, uh, David is talking, and, you know, he said in Psalm 71, verse 7, he said, I have become a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. You know, um, saying this in humility, those of you who've been on stage, you've sold albums, who have made signed autographs, look, have been looked up to, sometimes you're, you're seen as like a, whoa, this guy's really awesome, a wonder, like David said. And when I heard that, I was like, yeah, I kind of, I can relate to that because um, when God gives you favor and you're gifting, people are attracted to you. But immediately, David says, but you, oh God, are my strong refuge. He understood that he was getting older and that his gift and his position was temporary. He understood that. It says here, um, oh God, you have taught me from my youth. This is David. And to this day, I declare your wondrous works. This is almost like a Christian metal musician's psalm, Psalm 71. It says, Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is, is to come. What an awesome verse. I could keep reading. I'm not going to keep going. But I just want you to know that God has specifically called you to do what you have been chosen to do, and you need to walk in it. And I will tell you, in the meantime, I will be doing it with you. So God bless you guys, and we'll see you soon.